Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Strategy Gamers. Today we're going to be doing another War Game Red Dragon replay multiplayer video. But it's going to be a little bit different this time because it's not a 2v2, it's not a 3v3, it's not a 4v4, it's a 10v10. Yes, that's what we're doing here. We are doing a 10v10, or at least watching a replay of a 10v10. So let's just hit the play button here, let's speed it up a little bit while we're kind of going through the setup phase. So... First of all, I'd like to give a shout out to a John Christopher Loon, who's been giving me some suggestions on how to change my deck and just kind of fix it up a little bit, make it a bit more competitive. And you'll see this, a bunch of people kind of just randomly left the game, probably crashing or something like that. So let's slow it down a little bit. But yeah, I'd like to give a thanks to them. They kind of gave me some suggestions. They um, suggested that I kind of change up my Air Force a little bit. Now, um, the big the suggestion that I liked the most was the Eurozone Typhoon Fighter. The It's a fighter superiority kind of thing. I'm loving it. It's really good. It works so well, and it I, really works well, considering I'm mainly armor-based. It's nice to have something that allows me to compete against air without needing to spam 50 million anti-air units along the entire map. And I also kind of, under their suggestion, changed my infantry a little bit. And they suggested that I add, I think it was Challenger 1 and Challenger 2. Now, I already did have those, I just wasn't using those, so it's a good reminder that I need to use a bit more of my deck rather than limiting myself to just a little bit of it. And you're probably wondering, why are you calling in these Challenger 1 Mark 2 so early? What are you doing? Well, I kind of wasn't paying attention, and one thing led to another, and I might not have deployed my entire army before the game started. So I'm a, I kind of got cut off a little bit behind because I wasn't paying attention to that. I was kind of looking around the map, seeing what my allies were doing. And by the time I saw it, I had like 10 seconds left. So that went very well, I think. I think that it's an amazing decision to deploy your units late. It totally didn't slow me down at all. But no, right here, I love this. This is so cool. You just get this convoy of tanks and anti-air and all this. It's really cool. I remember I was just playing a game and I saw this, I'm like, my troops don't need my attention anymore. This convoy deserves all of my attention. It's so awesome. But, yeah, so, one thing that surprised me a little bit. Yeah. If you play a war game, or if you play any strategy game, you'll see the problem here. No troops. I don't know why they did that. Granted, we didn't have our biggest army on the left side. But a command unit and two FOBs. And the rest of the troops are over here. Mainly artillery, which was very annoying until... Something happened to that artillery. I'm not going to say what happened yet, but you'll see pretty soon what we did to that artillery. Well, not I didn't really contribute what my allies did to that artillery. We had nothing here. I was really shocked to see this. My allies are probably going in here like... Oh, how many helicopters are we going to lose to the enemy troops in this area? But nope. Nothing. At all. They focused everything center and right. And we focused a good portion of our troops center and right, but we at least had enough on the left to make an offensive, which ended up helping us a lot. So as you can see, these guys are already kind of starting up their battle here, while my troops are still getting into position. And the enemy never really had a chance here. Their near, let's see, their nearest armor is these T-55Ls, right? That's their nearest armor support. What have we got here? We got chieftains, we got challengers, more chieftains. Well, I guess these aren't really armor, they're kind of anti-air, but still. Plus, Navy SEALs, riflemen. We had the infantry advantage, we had the vehicle advantage, armor advantage. Plus, if needed, I had three more challengers coming up. Plus the ability that I was, I think at this point I just got my first, not anti, I'm um, fighter superiority plane, but my first actual bomber. Can't remember which bomber it was, but I think around this time I'd got it. I think. Maybe not. I don't know. But yeah, the artillery here, they kind of just got a lot of artillery and started shelling us, and it was pretty annoying. But yeah, oh uh, well, you know, let's just say, look at what weapon these things are carrying. Let's see, where are they heading? It's totally not these guys, I can promise you that. It's not these guys. What are you guys thinking? 
No, no. I'm telling you, guys, they are obviously going for this one. They're going... It has no ammo. They're going to target this one. I'm calling it right now. There's no... These, this artillery over here, it has no value. With that command unit... We, no, that doesn't matter. No, they're going for this one. They're going to just turn... Oh, no, I was wrong. Okay. Okay, I thought they were going to go for this one. I really did. No, they went for the command units and artillery. So shocked. But seriously, though. Yeah, this is kind of what really just turned the game in our favor. When they when they did come in this way and didn't attack this artillery, probably for the better. Um, and just they took out the command units here. They took out the artillery that stopped the shelling they were putting down over here. We took complete control of this area at this point. They had no artillery support. We mounted an offensive on the left, and since they had no troops to defend that side, we kind of just slowly pushed this way from that way, and unfortunately I kind of played a supporting role again. I didn't want to, I was trying to be a bit more offensive. But in a 10v10, you just don't always have that option to be that kind of hero of the day. The one that kind of makes that big offensive and wins the day. You just don't always have that option. So I'm probably not going to be doing another 10v10. I'm probably going to stick with the 2v2, 3v3s, and maybe 4v4s. Just so I have that option to make mistakes. To claim those victories. Make those decisions that kind of win the game. And become a better player in that respect. I'm not saying I want all the credit for winning or anything. But I want the opportunity to have victories like that. So I can learn more instead of just watching other people win. I want to be able to win myself. So, I might do another 10v10, but expect mostly 2v2s, 3v3s, and again, maybe 4v4s. Uh, I just played this because I saw it, and I'm like, I I did a 10v10 once before, and it was so fun, so. Let's go again, let's do it. And it was actually pretty fun. Just I didn't learn much. It was nice to test out the Eurozone fighter, though. There we go, another person surrendering. And the amount of planes that were just... At, once we took this area, you will see there's like at least 10 planes at any given time. Like now you can see we have a bunch of planes deploying to try to gain air superiority over this region. So this assault would be a complete success and we'd be able to take over... What's that? Whiskey? Yes, whiskey. But once we'd taken this area, there was always planes. Just people spawning them out and we were just destroying everything here. They started putting some anti-air here. But let's just say we had so many planes that it didn't matter. I think these are them here. Yeah, it just didn't even matter. That's how many planes we had. That, that was kind of interesting to see that. <coughs> excuse me. That they were. you just saw them trying. It's like, I'm sorry, guys. We have more planes than you do anti-air guns. Uh, in the end, we probably, we probably lost more planes than they had anti-air guns. So we just kind of flew them over there, anti air guns, and didn't even care. Even though we knew they were there and we had allies pinning them. Like, pinging them. We still just kept, like, spawning them in. And you'd get this one enemy fighter every once in a while, who's just like, I got this, guys! I am the hero! I will destroy every plane! And then they just get shot down, because, like I said, we had so many planes. You still, they're spawning from all over. Oh, here's mine! Yeah! They're gonna die, I think. Did they make it? No, they did not make it. Yeah! I contributed, right? Helped? This is helping. That's helping, right? I helped. I helped, yes. I'm I'm a good helper. No, but let's let's see, how's my army doing? Yeah, I just had them in a nice little defensive area here. They were all happy. They didn't, they weren't, they weren't concentrating on the enemy army over here. That was somebody else's problem. We were just having a good time over here at golf. Uh, they weren't playing golf, though. They wanted to, but no, we were not playing golf. So let's see, how are we doing over here? You see that offensive is kind of making its way this way. Mostly helicopters at this point. We have a few tanks. But, yeah, in about five minutes, not, or five minutes, the game's over. In about two, three minutes, there's just so many troops. Because we capped this, and we started spawning in units, helicopters, planes. And the enemy started to just surrender. Very short game. Let's see what's going on here. Again, this is another thing. Why? 
Are there ants here? Here. There, what, what should be going on here? Is this the same player? It is. So maybe put their tanks here and their anti-air back here. Or wait, is that anti-air or is that anti-tank? they firing on a helicopter? Yes. So that's anti-air. That's so risky. I'm sorry, you make one move and a tank's coming up, you can lose both those anti-air. No, that, really, yeah, you might lose a couple meters moving back here, but it's in the end, I think it's really quite worth it to keep them alive. It's right there. Maybe, well, I mean, if a plane's coming at them, it's not going to make a difference, but if it was ground offensive, these tanks would have been able to probably hold them off while maybe you got reinforcements there, pulled that anti-air out, whatever it being, you would probably, if that was ground assault, being able to save them. But instead, they put them on the front line. Not saying that I haven't made mistakes like that myself, but that's something that I definitely do not, I hope I will not do. And if I do do it, please somebody call me on it, because I do not like making those mistakes, and I want to improve my war game skills. My goal is to be the best war game player that has ever lived, and the timeline is three days. Yes, that's my plan. I'm going to be the best war game player in the next three days. Believe in myself. I can do this. It's definitely possible. I'm going to... I'm just... I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It's, I'm going to be the best war game player next three days. I'm going to be on the news, everything. I'm going to be like, strategy gamers, best war game player that ever lived. Oh, there's my fighter. We hit him. And as you can see, that anti-air, I didn't even care. I'm just like, oh, okay. Bye. No, but I do want to improve my skills. Okay, so we got about three more minutes until this game ends. Very short game, but very entertaining. I'll just say when you're actually in the game, this felt like a half an hour. And then I'm like, oh, that was only 15 minutes. Okay. It's going to be a short video. And as you can see, our allies were pinging the AA. We didn't care. We sent planes over there anyway. We're like, we have more planes than they do guns. We'll be fine. Are we not- do we not have ten planes? Why do we only have one eagle? Somebody spawn planes, please. I keep saying spawn. Somebody deploy planes. Like, no, we need more planes. It's not acceptable. Oh, there's- okay. There's a Nighthawk over there. More planes. Where are the planes? No, we need- that eagle needs cover. Send more planes. Oh, well, they're kind of- are they destroying the ants here? Are they? Ooh! Oh, that- what was that unit? Okay, that is- Oh, that- I can't see now. That was- I- whatever that is, I want one. Well, it was an eagle of some form? Electric voodoo. Didn't I get one of those? I think I- yes, I did, maybe? That was one of the other ones I was recommended. I think I got that one? I'm not sure, though. For the next game, though, I don't think I'm going to be using the Commonwealth deck. I'm thinking I might do... Ah... Uh, kind of feeling like... I'm, I'm, I like European um, countries probably the most. So I'm thinking I might do like a Eurocorps kind of thing. Germany and France. But yeah, I'm gonna, for now I'm going to stick with Europe. I might do Scandinavia after that. And then I'm probably going to do like... I don't know. I might do NORAD after that. Or maybe not. I kind of like... I really like Japan. I really like Japan's units in South Korea. But I really like playing the United States because, you know, Apaches and Abrams tanks. It's just so awesome. But no, I'm probably definitely next is going to be Eurocorps, then probably Scandinavia, and I'll decide if I want to go do NORAD or... What's the South Korea and Japan alliance called? Blue Dragons, I want to say? I don't know. I just remember seeing that before, but I don't know if somebody just named their deck that, or if that's what it was actually called. So don't quote me on that, I, I'm probably wrong. Oh, is that my fighter? Yeah! We're contributing! Look at us! We're contributing. Look, look at my, where am I here? Look at my 190 contribution of points. I had the least contribution. I probably had the most losses, too. Actually, I probably didn't. I was, I didn't lose much. I only lost a few planes. And there's the win. Oh shoot! Wow, I was pretty close to having the most losses. <laughs> it looks like, oh shoot, I had the third most losses. 
<laughs> and I had the least kills. Okay, did I at least help? Did I, I, I gave 790 command points. I helped, guys. Contribution. Um, no, but, yeah. So, next video, I'm probably going to be doing the Euro Corpse. May expect that uh, probably tomorrow, maybe the day after. Depends on when I get a chance to make the deck and play a game and then record the replay. Because sometimes you're just stuck in those lobbies so long and I'm, and I didn't, I'm lazy. I don't feel like editing. I might do a live one. I don't know. They're kind of more fun, but it's sometimes difficult for me to play and talk at the same time, especially in multiplayer when it's really competitive. But I'll see. I'll either do a replay or see if I can get a live game done. And when I say live, I'm not live streaming. I just mean I'm playing the game while I'm recording. Like I did with against the AI, but the AI was easier. Anyway, though, we'll, we'll have to see tomorrow or the day after. But regardless of that, I would like to thank everybody for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.